Hello Crafty Lahamas, in this video I'll be showing you how to knit the two hour mug hug. This is a pattern from Roxanne Yun from Zen Yarn Gardens Inc. It can be found in Ravelry and it's a free download that you can get without having to sign up for anything. So for this video, I will be using my Knit Pro Interchangeable Symphony Needles. I've got my four millimeter tips here. I have got a 60 centimeter cable. I've also got my cable caps and my tightening key, which comes with the cable. I'm then also going to use my Knit Pro Rainbow Row Counter Ring. Um, which I will use just to help me keep track of which row I'm on because it's a cable pattern it can get a little bit confusing at times and then I've just got my cable stitch holders here from Clover which will hold my stitches whilst I'm doing my cable knitting. The yarn I'm using is Inky Tincture from Noodle Soup which is a Norfolk based company. So first of all I'm just going to put my tips on my needles like so. When you're tightening, make sure you hold the metal sections of your needles and not twist by the wooden because that can then loosen the um, fixture between the metal and the wood. And that's how your needles wear faster. So do make sure if you are tightening, you are holding onto the metal sections. So to tighten, it comes with a really handy little tightening key which fits in the little gap there. And then you can just twist and make sure that comes out nice and tight like so. I'm just going to do the same with my other needle. I'm just going to tighten that. Pop that in the little hole. There we go. Lovely. So this is the Knit Pro Rainbow Row Counter Ring. Um, I've got the size 9, which is a 19 millimeter diameter, which is the size there. So that just fits nicely on my thumb, with not too loosely, um, but also not too tightly that I can kind of still knit with it, because obviously mobility in your thumb is quite important when you're knitting. Um, how this works is that you just, you push in one side and then you twist, and then that will help you keep track of what row you're on. And there's a little kind of shave down side at the side, which tells you this is the kind of side that's facing you and the row that you're on. So I've just set it to zero. So this pattern calls for a double knit yarn. Um, I'm going to be using two stranded four ply. Um, like I said, this is Inky Tincture from Noodle Soup. Um, so yeah. So I'm going to cast on 24 stitches. I'm going to use a thumb cast on method, um, but you can use whichever method you like to use. So now I've got my cast on 24 stitches, just like so. Um, the advantage of doing the thumb cast on is that it just creates a really nice edging at the bottom. Um, it's quite a tidy cast on method, but once again, completely up to you which ones you use. Um, this is one that I've started using quite recently. And I just quite like it at the moment, so whatever takes you fancy. Row one is going to be your right side. You can mark your right side by using a stitch marker. Over time, you'll just kind of learn which ones you're right and your wrong side. It's always handy to make a note on your, if you've got like a little notebook or something to say even rows or odd rows your right side. In this case, odd rows are gonna be our right side. So we're gonna start with knit to four. Um, before I get going, I am just going to give you a bit of a warning that I am a combination continental knitter. Um, so the way I do things, it might look a little bit different to how you do them, but don't worry, just knit or purl as you would normally and it'll all come out the same. Also just trying to undo this knot in my yarn. Right, so your first row is knit four, purl four, knit eight, purl four, knit four. So here I've got my short tail and here I have my long tail of yarn. I'm going to knit four to begin with. I cast on really tightly, so this is going to be a bit of a squidge for me, and a bit of a painful one at first. If you are quite a tight cast on, then um, yeah, join the club. So I have knitted four, you then purl four, so knit four, purl four, the next bit is knit eight. 
and then you purl four and then you knit the last four stitches and that is your first row complete so I'm just gonna show that on my room and move that to one so I know I've done row one I know it's quite hard to see because of the reflection but I have changed it so row two this is your wrong side so this is going to be side facing your mug and you're gonna purl four, knit four, purl eight, knit four, purl four. So that is the end of your second row. So what that is just essentially creating that your first four stitches are going to be your edging. And then in the middle you have, um, so you've got your kind of knit fours at the end, your purls, and then your middle section here, which is where your cable will go. Okay. So, row three is a repeat of row one, which is your knit four, purl four, knit eight, purl four, knit four. That is the end of row three. Row four is knit eight, purl eight, knit eight. is the end of your fourth row. So we're now going to do row five, which is a repeat of row one, which means you knit four, purl four, knit eight, purl four, knit four. So row six is a repeat of row two, which means you purl four, knit four, purl eight, knit four, purl four. So we're now going to do row seven, which is a knit four, purl four, and then you're gonna cable eight front, purl four, knit four. So I'll show you what that means when I get to it. So you start by knitting four, then purling four. So I'm now at the bit where I need to cable. So I'm going to start by putting four stitches onto my cable needle. So I'm going to be using my small cable needle, like so. So all I do when I do this is I just slip the cable needle through the bottom like that just underneath my needle so I find there's nice space underneath and then I just pop those off like so and then all you do is you rest them on that little ridge like so and then you knit the next four stitches and then you'll knit them off your cable needle in a sec so you're knitting them out of order that is what a cable is it's just knitting your stitches out of order and the needle just helps you do that three and four and then there's two ways to do this so you can either slip them back onto your main needle or knit them straight off your cable needle I'm going to just pop them back onto my needle like so I hold them with my finger and then slip them on like that it is going to feel a little bit tight when you first do it because obviously you've moved your stitches but don't worry that's completely normal and then you just knit them as you would normally be careful when slipping them off because as I said they do tend to be quite tight. Three and four and that is your first bit of your cable. And I'll just finish this row and then I'll come back to you at the end to show you. So the next is purl four and then knit four. is the end of row seven so what that is is if I show you here you can see these stitches are now just slanting towards the left whilst these ones underneath kind of go under and come out towards the right so your next row will really help um, kind of bring out that definition and make it just lie that a little bit flatter because at the moment it's just a little bit wonky but that's completely normal so don't worry so row eight is a repeat of row four, which is knit eight, purl eight, knit eight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So 
and that is the end of row eight. So if I just show you now, just on here, you can see because I've just got that extra row on there, it's not quite as tight and you can see that bit is just flattened out a little bit at the top and you can see the start of our cable. So the pattern then just repeats those eight rows until it is long enough for your cup. So I'm just gonna carry on with these eight rows and um, yeah, I will see you towards the end. So here I've got to the end of my repeat. So I did the first bit with you and then I've done one extra repeat. So I'll show you what this looks like in terms of the cable. So here you can see you've got it coming through twice. So this is a start. The edging has got this um, knit four and then you've got pearl a row and then, oh, sorry, knit three, pearl a row, knit three, pearl a row. So you've kind of got a little bit of a ridged effect along there. And this is how this is knitting up so far. So I'm just gonna keep going and I'll come back to you once I've done a couple more repeats just to show you how the um, twist and the cable has progressed. So I'm just coming back now, I've got one more repeat to do. Um, at the moment I have 62 rows because I messed up a tiny bit in the middle, um, counting wise, so just here um, I missed out a couple rows, so that's why I'm slightly off my rows, ideally I believe I should have 66 rows I believe, but yeah I went wrong, so don't do what I do. Um, but either way, you can't really tell too much. I also missed a slight ridge here. I'll bring it up and show you. So I'm missing one of the ridges at the side here. Um, but it's not no too noticeable, and it's honestly, it's just a good little thing to do to kind of get used to cable knitting. Also shows you that um, not everything you knit will be perfect, and that's absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna do the last repeat with you now, and then we will be good to go. So there we have the kind of finished pattern still on my needles so the next step is to bind off and block lightly I'm not going to bother blocking to be completely honest with you because it's for a mug um, so yeah uh, so the idea is that you line on your cast on and bind off edge and set up the seam allowance space for the handle if your cup has one and then you weave in the ends so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast off first and then I'll come back to that step and show you how I'm going to sew it all up Right, that is the end of my bind off, so I'm just going to snip a nice long tail end, which then allows me to sew up without having to get any more yarn out. So I'm just going to need more than enough, because there's nothing worse than realising you don't have enough. So I've got plenty there, and now I'm just going to pull that through. Like so. And now it is needle free. And this is... Oh, they're popping back. Um, this is my finished cable mug cozy. So um, I'm gonna point out my mistakes despite the fact I don't really want to. Um, the main mistake is here. So I did my second or my next cable too soon as you can tell here as there isn't the same space in between the cables here and here but it's not really too noticeable and like I said it's for a mug so um, I'm not really too bothered. Uh, and the other mistake is just here. You can see I've got the ridge there and there, but I'm missing the one in between. Once again, it's for a mug. I'll just put that bit at the bottom. It's not the end of the world. Overall, it's been a really nice pattern. It's taught me, well, not taught me, but it would be really good if you are new to cable stitch or cable knitting. And it's also just quite straightforward, really good for like gifts and things. So I've made these for like my grandma, my family members, myself, friends, all the rest of it 
really quick and simple patterns and they look really nice and decorative. They're also great stash busters. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew it up and um, yeah. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit it around my mug and sew the top and the bottom bit. Um, so I'll come back to you once that is all done. So this is my finished mug cosy project. Um, as you can see it's all finished so I'm just going to pop it on my mug. It's nice and stretchy so it just goes straight on like so. And all I did for the sewing was I sewed up the four stitches at the end um, on either side from the edging to kind of leave the gap for the handle. If you want you could also kind of put a button in a little buttonhole. I'm not too bothered. Um, it's just a nice quick and easy project. It's great for learning how to do cable knitting if you are interested. Um, and yeah, it knits up nice and quickly. So here is everything that I've used. So I've got my Knit Pro Symphony uh, four mil needles. I've then got my Clover darning needle set. Um, I just used the largest needle of the three, which is a nice chunky needle. I used my Knit Pro row counter ring, very handy. My um, cable needle, and of course my iconic higher higher Europe unicorn scissors and my trusty mug. So yeah, that is everything for today. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by commenting below and liking it. We do have weekly videos, so please subscribe to my channel. Our social handle is Crafty Llama UK, so you find us on various platforms using that. Please tag us if you attempt anything in this video, and of course, you can purchase all of the tools used in this video on our Etsy shop, which will be linked below. That's it for this week's video, but I'll be back with another one for you next week. Bye.